Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. I'm currently doing laundry, so you'll hear the noise of the washer and the dryer in the background. There was a magnitude 3.6 earthquake uh, 24 kilometers north northeast of Torona, California. For those of you not familiar with this area, it is near Ridgecrest. Nine people reported feeling this earthquake. And what's interesting about this earthquake, which was along the Panamint Fault Zone, which is about 95 to 100 kilometers in length, every time it has an earthquake, it ruptures the entire length of the fault system. reason I say it's probably a little bit longer, the fault system, is because of the rupture distance they have here on USGS. This was an intensity level here of 1. Um, 170 kilometers. Right here was 97 kilometers. Let me go back there. Uh, near Heading Flat, um, Shoshun, 94 kilometers. Um, Bowman Road, let's see, Furnace Creek, 68 kilometers. Um, Ridgecrest, okay, from the police station there at Ridgecrest. 49 kilometers and then they got some over here um, Miramonte, California um, Arcadia I thought well there's got to be something wrong you know how could it actually uh, Lake Balboa how could it rupture so far here's a paper by Earth Day I really like his work it says here reoccurrence of earthquakes along the entire 100 kilometer length of the fault zone may be shorter, shorter in between the times of earthquakes. If the ground did not break along the zone's entire length during each earthquake, most scarps that occur there along this fault zone are on average about 2 meters, which is about 6 feet 7 inches to scarps as high as 19 meters which is 62 feet. Can you imagine that? Another interesting fact along segments where they have the slip dip earthquake, which this happened to be, they don't have scarps. That's where the ground rises up. There was 8 to 14 events which had 20 meter scarps. It says the oldest deposit buried uh, 10,000 to 20,000 years ago along Lake Paramount uh, shoreline. This is a very dangerous fault zone because it intersects and creates stress between the Paramount fault zone and the Garlock fault zone. The Paramount Valley and the Garlock Falls reveal significant stress interactions between these two faults that may influence future earthquake occurrences. Specifically, our model suggests a possible rupture sequence whereby an event on the southern permanent valley fault can lead to the potential triggering of an event on the Garlock Fault, which could trigger a Mojave section of the San Andreas Fault Zone. I'm going to take this one line I put here out. I was doing some measuring, but here you can see the area right here is the Walker Lane garlic fault section and you can see that it goes all the way up through here to the Paramount Valley Fault and this 3.6 earthquake was on the southern section of the Paramount Valley Fault so you have to wonder okay the length of the fault fracture was so long so far did it shake part of the Garlock Fault Zone? The intensity map shows light uh, shaking close to where the epicenter has. And then weak over here. You can see here we got level 2 and 3 and level 4. There is a light blue line here going through the Mojave Desert. See that? So going back to Google Earth here we got Ridgecrest. This area here, which it shows the intensity map, yeah, that's part of the Garlock Fault Zone. For some reason, they have an intensity map 
on USGS, but they don't have on here. If I click on it, let me show you. A Did You Feel It page. All they have is the intensity page, which is unusual. If I click on the Did You Feel It zip code page, uh, this is what I get when I click on the uh, JPG. Yeah, file not found. Same thing for the uh, Did You Feel It intensity versus distance plot. I'll click on that and show you that. Let me bring it up for you. Yeah, file not found. When I click on PDF, I get the same thing. Let's try HTML. Yeah, file not found. One of the contributors is the California Geological Survey. If anyone wants to take the time and give them a call while this, why all this data is missing. But I really think they don't care. And there's the phone number for uh, Caltech. Yeah, they're probably working from home. Um, everything's still basically locked down in California. They are lifting the restrictions from the pandemic slowly. And then they have regional par partners at the Berkeley Seismological Lab, the California Geological Survey, Caltech, USGS, Memo Park, I have to laugh about that because uh, that is where Michael Pollan, um, who's supposed to keep in track on what's going on at Yellowstone Works, and then USGS Pasadena. Nothing to see, just move along, even though this fault zone, when it ruptures, it ruptures the entire length. It's a great threat to the Garlock fault zone and the San Andreas fault zone. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you.